for me when some fight for their God. Hey. Jesus, you know they use me clear. have to know we shall carry our petitions again before him as we cry before him he will answer us in Jesus name father we want to thank you we want to bless you we want to appreciate you thank you very much for your help thank you for all you have been to us it is true that you have not played with our lives you have been very, very serious with every detail of our home. Father, we give you praise. Accept our worship. Accept our thanks. Accept our heart of gratitude. Accept, oh God, our own lives as well. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We want to take some of our prayer points from the book of Genesis. 21 and I will read from verse 8 it says so the child grew and was weaned and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned and Sarah saw the son of Agai the Egyptian whom she had bore to Abraham's coffin therefore she said to Abraham Cast out this bond woman and her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not be here with my son, namely Isaac. I think I should pause here. We need an urgent prayer. This is the time when Abraham and his wife and his son, the son they have waited for a long time, she will enter into the fullness of their joy. But there was already a seed the enemy has sown. The enemy sowed that seed and they were growing together. So at the time of the harvest of their joy, there was a contention. When what supposed to belong to Isaac has to be shared between two people. I want you to be jealous over your home this afternoon as we pray we may not have sufficient time it is not about how long but the quality the quality of the prayer you pray right from your heart i want you to be jealous over your home whatsoever is the seed the enemy has planted because he has seen the future god is having for you he has planted it today i want us to root it out the one he planted yesterday i want us to root it out I want you to begin to deal with every time bomb the enemy has planted against your home, against my home. Today, Lord, whatsoever see the enemy has sown, even against my home, the one he has sown in order to contend with my children, the one that he has sown that in order to contend with my future. Lord, to, I mean, this afternoon, Lord, we root it out in the name of Jesus. We root out every seed that which the enemy perhaps he gave it to us as a gift perhaps he has even deceived us to buy it perhaps it does not matter the shape oh when we talk about abraham we talk about a guy there are attitude the enemy has planted in our lives that will not work for us in future lord i ask that it be rooted out even this day in the name of jesus whatsoever seed that the enemy has planted against me 
against my husband, against our children, against our home, against the future of our, of our lives. Today we root it out. We root it out. We detonate every time bomb. The bomb he has planted and the bomb is, kick, is clicking. The bomb is clicking. Every of such bomb today by the power that is in the name of Jesus, I detonate you. You will not prosper. You will not prosper. You, want, you are the one that is already positioned even to stress me at my old age. You are there. You want to stress my children. You are the one that wants to stress and confuse my husband. Today, I root you out. Whether I know you, whether I do not know you. Are you visible? Are you invisible? Today, I root you out. Because the Bible says, Whatsoever tree that our father has not planted shall be rooted out. Therefore, this day, I root every tree that the enemy has planted. You have planted it in different way. You have planted it in, in our physical body, in our spiritual life. You have planted it in our emotional life. Today I root you out. In the name of Jesus, you will not prosper. You will not grow. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I hope you are praying from the depth of your heart. If, if Sarah had been very sensitive, do you know her guy was giving just as a small seed. Agai, it was no longer Agai alone. Agai gave birth. Whatsoever tree has been planted in order to yield fruits that will torment your home, begin to, the Bible says, Acts is lay at the root. Can you begin to command the such tree to be rooted out completely? Maybe some of it is already yielding fruit. Kill it and destroy its root. In the name of Jesus, I destroy you from your root. I destroy your seed. Every negative seed that has been planted. It doesn't matter. Maybe you don't even matter now. But you are to matter negatively. Even against me, against my husband or children. Against our household in the future. Yes, today we root you out. Today I root you out. Today I root you out. Because you are not of God, I root you out. Mekima Kusinta, you are placed and positioned to, to torture and destroy the glorious future that the Lord has for us. That is the reason why you will not survive. Even in the name of Jesus. Are you were you put together in the spiritual realm? Was it a mistake we make in the physical realm? Yea, today we destroy you. We destroy you. You will not contend with the children of promise that God has given unto us. You will not contend with the with the future. With the brilliant future the Lord has given to us. You will not. You will not. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says when the head shall come like a flood. Yet the spirit of the Lord will lift his standard. Yes Holy Spirit lift your standard against every hidden agenda. Against me. Against my husband and children. Oh that those calculated. Those calculated miseries. Yea, Makasutoria, we raise the standard of the Lord against you today. We say you will not prosper against me. You will not prosper against my children. You will not prosper against our home. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Maya Koseka Posataria, Maya Kosetetetete, Ori Kapashika. That strange arrow, the enemy is trying to calculate and, and shoot even against our future. Yea, I divide you in the name of Jesus. Oh, I ask that the Almighty God root you out in Jesus' mighty name. We pray from Genesis, from the beginning of the life of Sarah and her husband, there was never a contention except this one. There was never a contention. Even when the husband was trying to sell her out, I said, this one is not my wife. Did you hear her voice? No, she didn't talk. But this one became a, a bone of contention. Whatever the enemy has put in place to perpetually cause trouble between you and your husband, between you and your spouse, I want you to begin to deal with it right now. Begin to deal with it in the name of Jesus. That thing, that altar that is raised, that habit, that behavior, Oh, that personality, that power, that principality that the enemy has put in place to cause bone of contention between me and my husband. Yea, I come against you in the name of Jesus. You are not of God. I come against you today. 
I bring you down in the name of Jesus. Is there a word spoken into the hair? I revoke you. I counter you. You will no longer be potent in the name of of Jesus is in an altar race against us. I said today by the power that is in the name of Jesus, such altar, I withdraw your strength, I withdraw your power, you will not, you will not no longer prosper in the name of Jesus. I pray make a mosotoria. Is it the one done in the hair? Is it the one done in the sea? Is it the one that is conjured together even on the planet of heart? kapusa. I withdraw you. I root you out. You will no longer prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my moshinda. Oh my kusata. Whatever it is that has been put together, whatever it is that causes even trouble between me and my husband, I between me and my spouse, I say today I bring an hand to it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. This was the day of salvation for this family. The Bible was careful to say, Sarah was saying, cast this woman out. Send this wife, send the child out for the first time. The husband said no. The husband said no. In this one, we will not agree. And he, God has to come down. Is there a matter in your home you want God to come down? Is there a matter God has to step into? Can you begin to ask the Lord? Father, over this matter, Lord, come down. Come down and step into it. It was God who said to Abraham, Say, Hear your wife, listen to your wife. Father, in that might, oh God, where your spouse have, where the spouse is not been listening, I command in the name of Jesus, oh, that there will be hearing, that will be listening in the name of Jesus. Oh, my yake, say Mosca, Lord, come down, come down, step into all the situation, step into all the affairs. Oh, God, come down. Oh, Lord, come down. Oh, Lord, come down. I manifest your power, oh Lord, come down. I manifest your power, oh come down, oh Lord. I manifest your power, oh Lord, come down. It was a direct instruction. Abraham, hear your wife. Listen to your wife. I don't know what is it that I've been contending between you and your spouse. Can you ask the Lord step into it? Oh Lord, step into it. Lord, we ask that you will step into it this, this evening. In the name of Jesus, step into it. Step into it. In the name of Jesus, step into it. Lord, answer our oh God in the name of Jesus step into it in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray I read something in the book of Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 he said no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn we want to condemn and we want to dismantle every weapon excuse me can be Weapon of powers, weapons of personalities, weapons of principalities. It can actually be tiny weapons of wrong behavior that the enemy has cooked to wage war against your home. I want you to begin to decree and declare that it will no longer prosper. In my home, you will no longer prosper. In our homes, you will no longer prosper every weapon the one that was done before the one that was being that is being prepared you will not prosper in the name of jesus it does not matter the shape it does not matter the style it does not matter how you are bringing yourself in today i dismantle every weapon of the enemy against my home against against the counsel of god for us against my husband against me against our children against our house entirely Oh, we decree, we, decree, we decree and declare that you will not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not prosper in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Every tongue that raises against you in judgment, we should condemn. There are tongues continuously. You are the one thinking everybody like you. 
Oh, you want to you want to begin to cut every negative tongue into pieces. As many tongues that are releasing negative words against against your home, that are doing enchantment, that are chanting against our home. Can you begin to condemn it? Begin to condemn it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every negative words that is raised against me, against my husband and children. Today we revoke such words. We terminate it in the name of Jesus. We decree that such tongue will not prosper. It will not prosper. We condemn it in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, it shall not stand in the name of Jesus. Oh, whatever has been decreed, decreed against us will not prosper. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We magnify you because no, no, no weapon formed against us will prosper in the name of Jesus. We thank you, King of Glory, because every strange seed that has been planted in order to be yield fruit that will contend against us, it shall not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We worship you. You deliver the house of Sarah. You will deliver my household also. You will deliver the household of every member of our ministry. Father, you will intervene in every continuous contention, even that is in any house in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Let us begin to give God praise for answers to prayer. Let us worship him for another time in his presence. As we begin to sing songs of worship, we begin to sing to him, to offer him our sacrifice of Bless. praise. Let's begin to worship him. Begin to give the sacrifice from your lips. Adore him in the way that you know best. Just say something good to the Lord. Think of all he has done for you. Think of the opportunity, the privilege of standing in his presence this evening. Just say something to the Lord. Appreciate him. Let the worship come from the bottom of your heart this evening. Let it come from you. Just say something. Speak to the Lord. Appreciate him for all he has done. Appreciate him. Think of all he has done and just give him to give him praise. Blessed be his name. He is the God of all, 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 all flesh. He is the great God. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Lord, we appreciate you for all you are doing in our homes. Thank you for showing yourself mighty every day. Lord, we give you praise. We worship you. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. We want to sing a song. As we sing together, just put our hands together and worship God from our heart this evening. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your name. 
opening time of worship. What a joy to come your way this evening. This will be the best of our day. Amen. We will enjoy the favor, the mercy, and the grace of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome to Wookie Trusts for healthy relationship. And I'm so sure that so far many lives have been helped, many relationships have been healed, and we're going to have a build up today. It will be the best of it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to give you some very important announcements that is going to help you to be well informed. Number one is that tomorrow, Wednesday, the 27th, is known as Children's Day, and our children will not be left out in the blessings and the joy of the Children's Day Festival. So as a ministry, tomorrow we shall be live on radio in the afternoon between 1 and 2 p.m. on radio. I'd like you to join us on MIV Radio. You can download the app and you can um, connect with us. We're looking at living in obedience. That's what we'll be looking at tomorrow for our children living in obedience just for one hour, one to two. And our resource person, our children, we're also networking with CEM, so they will also be partnering with us as we host this great time for our children tomorrow between 1 to 2 p.m. Tomorrow we have a very special guest, two couples. We'll be hosting them live here and you will be at liberty to ask them questions, to hear their story, to hear their journey. And I'm looking forward to that myself. I need to hear all their stories and how God has helped them. So tomorrow, in an interactive live session by 4.30, we'll be both live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on the radio. We'll be hosting Dr. Babajin Day, Oguri Day, and his dear wife will also be hosting Pastor Shola Mene of Petrat Ministry and his dear wife for a lifetime discussion. Earlier on, we brought two couples. One was married for 43 years. The other was married for 49 years. Now that looked like an old one. We're bringing a more younger couple this time. And um, Pastor Shola Mene and his dear wife had been married for 21 years. That look a little bit old though, but fine. And then we're also having a younger couple who will be married for 11 years. That's Dr. Ogorin Day and his dear wife. It will be a great joy to have you join. Myself and mommy will be moderating these two couples and there will be so much to learn from them. It will be a joy you invite your friends and family and let's all come together and learn wisdom from their lives and i'm sure you will be blessed amen, amen. all right um, this weekend is full for us because it's our family life conference from friday saturday sunday and then we're going to trust god to visit and bring healings into our homes and into our relationship and i'm sure your marriage will be better for it in the name of jesus amen. okay We'll take off our journey where we stop on Sunday. We're looking at the running the Wookie Trust for healthy relationship. If you're just joining us and you're wondering what is Wookie, Wookie simply means wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and instruction for healthy relationship. All over the world today, no institution is so resisted, so attacked, so troubled like the marriage institution and it's been going through a lot of redefinition from people because they just can't make it work now he can work when you dismiss the owner of the institution god is the one who began marriage and it will take learning from him to keep one and the lord will help you to keep yours in the name of jesus so we've spoken on several things and today we're building a little further, looking at the law of priorities 
And in this period, we're looking at the law for effective and productive relationship. We had that introduction. I do hope I will have enough time to consider two or three of the laws that will help us drive this trust more clearly. So when you look at the law of productive and effective marriage, under that we have about seven laws. And all we did last Sunday was to do the basic introduction of all of this. And once we're done with that, we will start examining each of those laws and learn great lessons from them. Amen. Amen. And as a Shia, please start sending in all questions that you may have and that might bother you, and that will help us buy more time. At times, the questions come towards the end, and they become more challenging at times because we're pressed for time, and we're almost thinking of closing. So, today, we'll build on from where we stop, Matthew chapter 19. We'll look at verse 4 and verse 5 and verse 6 today, just as a guide before we start looking at other things we need to do. Matthew chapter 19, from verse 4, he answered, haven't you read in your Bible? that the creator originally made man and woman for each other, male and female. Verse 5. And because of this, a man leaves father and mother and is firmly bounded to his wife, becoming one flesh, no longer two bodies, but one. Because God created this organic union of two sexes, no one should desecrate this act by cutting them apart. King James says that no man put asunder under no circumstances should any man put asunder. Praise God. Amen. So the law of priority. For this cause, God, God himself spoke clearly to man that he will leave his father and his mother and he will be joined to his wife. attention to. He said, that's my priority now. For example, you have to say, my priority is my exam. Have you had such kind of statement? It shows every other thing got to wait until the exam is done with and the exam is done successfully. For me, say, my priority now is this or that. So in life, priority is what
takes all our attention and every other thing becomes secondary. Every other thing becomes secondary. So when you say my spouse is my priority, it suggests that every other thing, including your parents, including your close friend, every other thing becomes number two. Is that okay? So it becomes your number one priority and it shows he is qualified to have every attention from you. Every attention from you. So to have your spouse as your priority means he deserves your full 100% attention. Nothing for straight a wife or a lady like talking to her husband that will not give her an attention. And you're talking to him. He says, I'm hearing you, but he's not hearing. He's not engrossed talking with you. So it raises a lot of concern for you because normally your spouse will want an, an enrapt attention as she talks with you and you respond back to him. This is one of the things that kills our priority into one another. So making your spouse your first priority in your life requires an intentional concentration on his or her person. Intentional concentration on his or her persons. Very important. Therefore, sacrifice is required. You will need to give up many things to cleave to him or cleave to her. You will need to give up many things to cleave to him or to her. Very important. So that's a therefore shall a man leave. You have to leave father and mother and be cleave. You leave to cleave. Now, other word for cleave means to glue together. To come so closely that there is no interference and nobody comes in between you. We will deal with interference later if we have the time. But that's the standard. Is that taken? That's the standard. And so to achieve this law of priority, time investment is an essential commodity. Time investment is an essential commodity in sustaining the law of priority in your relationship. Very, very important to note. Sacrifice and investment of time will help you to prioritize for one another. So it implies in all decisions you're going to make, your spouse becomes the first consideration. How does this decision help my spouse? How does this decision... Is, we're not even talking about your children. That's very interesting. So when we talk about the law of priority, it comes, this is priority number one, priority number two, priority number three. So it comes in that order. And we're saying the number one priority outside of God is your spouse. That's your number one priority outside of, your, I mean, outside of God. God is ultimate. But we're talking about relationship here. Your next committed person is your spouse. Pay the price to have the best of it. Very important. So sacrifice is required. Time investment is very important. Number three, energy. Display of definite energy trusts is required. Because it's your priority. And anything as a priority, we need your time. We need your energy. We need your sacrifice. Czech students who are reading for an exam, they put in all the energy if they are very studious students. They put in all the energy close to the exam and they're ready to just pay the price. No party at that time. No traveling to anywhere. In fact, at times some students don't bath. So I learned. Just to give all the attention to that all important exams. And once that is done, then number two follows. Number three follows. So we say if your spouse 
will become your number one priority in this relationship matter. Time is required as investment. Money is required as investment. Let me tell you some truth. You want to enjoy your spouse as your highest priority in relationship. Money is very essential. I'm praying for you. You will not be poor. Yeah. You will not lack money to service your relationship. I tell you, ladies love gifts. You give them anything, their face will bloom. Because they are very grateful human beings. And they are very attracted to whatsoever thing people give to them. It draws their attention. It renews their commitment. So it's so important that you have money. Now I'm not asking you to go steal money. I'm saying to you, work hard and have money. You don't need to have a competitive money. You just have enough to run your life well and run your home well. And as God increases your capacity excellently well, keep growing. And that's my prayer, that your financial capacity will grow great and grow strong. But start from the little point you are now. As a little boy, my mother believed I was so generous. And she's always said to me, you are a child that has mercy on the face and you can show mercy to people. Because as a little boy, I was doing some little petty petty selling. And when I sell and make some little profit, I take the whole profit and go give my mother. And I said to her, add this profit to your business. Now, how much is the profit we are talking about here? You understand? And I say, add it to your business. So we're not talking about having so much money before you take care of your spouse as a priority. We're saying whatever is available, let her know that she's a consideration in the spending. Let her know that she's a consideration in the spending. Under the law of priority, you must not only prioritize by investing time and money and energy and making sacrifice for one another, you must also keep an attitude that makes you attractive to each other without easy alternatives. I'm telling you the truth. If you are not keeping yourself attractive to your spouse, there are alternatives out there. Did you hear that? That looks tough, but that's the truth. There are alternatives out there. So you must get to a point where you are very intentional in being attractive enough to your spouse. Is that well understood? Do a beautiful airstyle. Did you hear me? As a lady, do a beautiful dress and look good just for him first and then any other person may appreciate it. Is that well understood? Never do things that will not draw his attention or her attention. Is that well understood? As a man, never do things that will not draw the attention of your wife if you're married. Never do things as a lady that will not draw the attention of your husband. So always keep yourself very, very relevant and attractive to him or to her, whichever way. Amen? So these are very important issues under the law of priorities. And then I'd like to give you two more on that. Number one, if your spouse is a priority, you will find a way. To be with your spouse. But if it's not your priority, you will find an excuse. And part of the excuses we find is my job. I have a meeting. I have an appointment. I have a deal. I have a client waiting. I have a patient somewhere. I have this. When there are endless excuses to avoid being with each other, it shows you are not a priority to each other. Thank God for the lockdown. It makes some couples stay longer together than they plan. And I've had so many feedbacks from different places. Some say, we thank God we're getting used to each other better for this lockdown. Some say, we've been fighting forever. This lockdown has to end. I want to escape from this home. 
And for yourself, may they stretch the lockdown a little more and let me find out where you will run to. This is not a time to escape. This is time to sit down and say, now it's clear we are not friends. Can we begin the journey of true friendship? Let's sit down and start looking at what are the prizes of each party in this relationship. Everybody got a prize. Pay the price, the lady will melt in your hand. Did you get that? Pay the price, the guy will melt into your hand. If you don't pay the price and you keep speaking English, you will fight forever. And it will not be a demonic attack. It will be an attack of ignorance and lack of knowledge of who your spouse is. Is that well understood? So you must come to that point. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. As I try to round up on the law of priority, I'm trying to see if we can get to the law of pursuit, law of intimacy, and then we can build on that uh, subsequently. Luke Chapter 9, verse 23. If you choose your spouse as a priority, then deny yourself. Luke 9, 23. He said to them, to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. If you choose your spouse as a priority, then you must deny yourself. There are other things we'll enjoy. Is that true? There are other things we enjoy until we'll deny ourselves, we'll not make our spouse our highest priority. Some of the things you need to deny yourself of is deny yourself of spending a longer time watching the cable TV, watching movies forever. Watch each other. You are enough a cinema. Amen? Watch each other. Shut down the cable. Act a cinema to your spouse. Act a drama. We will come pay to watch the two of you. But it's so important that when you have lesser distractions around you, you will see details about each other. But when you have too much distractions, you got a music going on, you got um, TV going on, you got children going on, you got everybody making noise going on, and the big one, you got your telephone in your hand that runs forever. I wish they can just cancel telephone. I'm telling you. Or we can make a law that when couples meet together, they must not hold their telephone, switch it off and throw it away somewhere. Because some of us, we're having a secret affairs with our telephone. You know what I mean by secret affairs? The telephone, you are married to that telephone. You are a polygamist. Married to your spouse and married to telephone. You are a polygamist. So it's so important for you to deal with distractions. Is that Okay. If your spouse is a priority, concentration gives you details of your spouse. Did you hear that? If your spouse is your priority, concentration will give you details of your spouse. There are people who are married and they don't have some details about their spouse. They don't even know how his nose looks like. They don't know how his eyeball looks like. If you say to them, describe your spouse's eyeball, say, well, you always see me, so what am I describing? You're not sure of that. You don't have the detail because you are not concentrating. Very important. These are the little under the law of priority. So if you say you choose your spouse, nobody chose him for you. If you say you choose your spouse, then make him your priority. That this guy in my life will not fail under my watch. This lady in my life will not fail under my watch. That's my priority. I will do everything to make sure the best come out of this life that has come into me. Nothing makes a lady almost worship you all your lifetime if she knows you care so much about her. Is that true? If she knows she's got your back, ha, she will never be strong around you. Who doesn't even know what I'm talking about here? She will never be strong around you. Because anytime she finds you, she wants to just melt into your hand. She knows you are there. She knows she, you won't hit the ground 
You know what I'm talking about? At times you try to fall into your spouse's hand, the guy dodge. You hit a hard floor. And they're telling you, sorry, when you broke your back. No. May you be so committed to each other that either of you can fall into each other's hand and you will not touch the ground. Now when I say that, it's not a physical exercise I'm talking about. So that we don't close and you try to fall into our hand. Okay? But I'm sure the married knows what I'm talking about. Is that taken? Yes. yes. So the law of pursuit, let me run quickly, because there's one great secret I wish I can share with you if we have enough time. But let's see the law of pursuit. Anything you pursue will demand your energy, will demand your skill, will demand your expertise. Three words. Energy, Skill, expertise. Energy, skill, expertise. Very important. Can I pray for all the men hearing me? May you be a skillful lover. Oh, you didn't get that. I'm telling you, may you be a skillful lover. Not just talking with mouth. I love my wife. I love my wife. That's not skill. It's not skillful enough. That's announcement. May you be a skillful lover. Wow. I think I need to teach men this. Skillful lovers. We need to teach that. Because our wives know so much about how to care for us. But so many of us, we are just one figure. No creative idea. Nothing. Skillful lover. I do hope I'll be reminded to prepare this for men alone. There are some details that only men should hear. Skillful lovers. Because some guys, they are in love, but they are not skillful. Well, what I just said now. They are genuine guys, though. They are very genuine. They truly love, but they are not skillful. And because they are not skillful, the wives start feeling bored after a while. So there's nothing. Your Lord and Master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Verse 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. That ye should do as I have done to you. Do. Serve. What did Jesus did? He washed the feet. He said, ah, but um, he's trying to teach us service. Yes. You own your family a service. You own your family a service. Imagine helping your wife to lose her hair. These are very attractive service. My wife is seated here. I do that for her. Lose the air. Comb her air. Massage her leg. Do her, what do they call that? Is it pedicure they call it? Whichever thing, I don't know. Fixing her nails. And I'm sure the men are hearing me here. This is service. Announcing surprisingly to your wife, hey baby, you're not cooking tonight. I'll just fix dinner before you arrive. She will collapse. She will do a special number for you. She will dance around you. These things that spice your relationship. So when I say pursue, it's not 400 meters. I'm not going to a physical 400 meters. You just need glucose to recover from that. I'm talking of caring. Pursue her interests. She's going to work all day. She will soon be back home. You just fix the bedroom and put a cat there. What a great working woman. Welcome home. I'm telling you she will never be tired entering that bedroom. Anybody see hearing me here? Pursue. I'm sure the men are fighting themselves now. Pursue. And this thing does not cost so much. Just imagine saying to your wife, go have your shower. I will iron your clothes before you're done um, cleaning up. And I'll be sure you dress very well. And as she's dressing up, you're making comments. You look beautiful. You look this. You look that. I love your courage. Friends, I am not a Pharisee. All I told you, I do. If you know my wife, check it with her. And I think I even overdo them at times. Pursue. 
Pursue the person you love. Don't let her slip off. Stop talking harshly to her. You will lose her prize. Women respond more to gracious, soft words. Stop talking like a military officer. You are not in the barrack. Great husbands speak graciously. And I'm telling you, even if you are angry and you can manage yourself and speak calmly to your spouse, the bigger picture of the crisis will be exposed and the victory will be there. What a joy to know how to speak well to your spouse. It solves a lot of problems. Don't become touchy. Don't become rough. You told, you told all the whole world that you love her. So are you speaking roughly at her? Choose your words. And it is wisdom when you pursue your spouse. When I use the word spouse, both husband or wife. When you pursue your spouse, it is wisdom for you to choose your fights. Don't fight on everything. Don't fight on small, small, small issues. Don't fight on things that take away your peace and they don't count much. Choose your fight. If God help you, don't fight at all. It's so important to note. Pursue love. Pursue her person. Play with her. Throw water on her. Tickle her. Run around the house if you have the space. Hold each other's hand. That's pursuit. Hold each other's hand. Go for evening stroll in the community. Park all your car. Get tired being in car all the time. Park your car. Take a stroll. Hold each other's hand. And hold each other by the waist. And take a stroll in their community. Let them know these guys are in love. You can hide love. And Song of Solomon tells you you can't even kill love. So when you love, you're in trouble already because it won't die. It won't die. You can fight it, it will show up. You can fight it, it will drive you. It will make you behave like a drunkard at times. Anybody hearing me here? And you start wondering if, is it that the devil catch? It's not the devil, it is love. I mean, you enjoy such strong love. Let it drive you like a drunkard. Amen? Yeah, some of you are getting quiet today. But it's just the truth I'm telling you. Now, that is the side of the lady. How should a lady pursue the husband for love? So it doesn't look one-sided. Pursue this man. What does he need to be captured? He needs honor. He needs respect. He needs endless touching. Some correct men. Some local men don't want touching at all. But some civil correct men want endless touching of their spouse. A lady wants to, I mean a husband wants to hear the husband, the wife say to, her, to him how much he appreciates his efforts. He wants to hear the wife say that. He wants, the wife, he wants to hear the wife reaffirm her commitment, her loyalty. Can I counsel everybody hearing me? Learn to chat the most with your spouse. If he's poor in communication, keep loading him with great words on the telephone. Baby just thought about you. Baby, how great has been your day? Baby, I'm about to close now. I'm about to enter the vehicle. I'm about to here. I'm closer home. I'm three minutes home. And the guy said, what is your problem? <laughs> What's your problem? Why are you telling me all this? Because I want you to know where I am at every time. I'm not, we're not talking about suspicion here. We're just talking about intimate information flow and flowing forever. You understand? Or have you finished dressing up? Or how do you look like? Oh, can I? I mean, that's just keep talking forever. I do hope somebody is learning something to do here. Go do these things. It will solve all the endless long time hanging. <coughs> 
And it will deliver you from the strange man, from the strange woman. It will deliver you from all kinds of interferences and prefaces at work. It will deliver you. It will deliver you. It's so important that you practice these simple, simple things. Say, but my husband walk. He goes away for two weeks and come back two weeks. Let that two weeks return. Be heaven on earth. The next time he's gone to offshore or wherever, he is eager to come back home. Not that he's arriving and he's meeting a third world war. That's not good enough. Pursue. Pursue one another. Pursue to see your spouse excellently well. Pursue. Pursue the guy. Give him the best of his food. Pursue him. When he's eating, eat with him. Take out of his meat. Make sure there's no gap between you. That's how to build your pursuit. Pursue each other. Learn how to outserve each other. Did you hear my statement? Learn how to outserve each other in every good thing. Learn how to outserve. I mean, serve better than each other. Make it a competitive thing to do each other good. Am I well understood? Stop raising issues that are negative that is past. Let them go. Destroy every references that reminds you of past heart. Let them go. It's offended you, yes, but let life continue. Don't give up. That bad guy will be a good guy tomorrow. That bad lady will be a good lady tomorrow. Don't give up on each other, but give up your past failures. Don't give up on each other, but give up your past failures. Let them go. That was your yesterday. You got a new day before you. So let that go and run a more healthy day. Stop making references to the failures of 1914. We are now in 2020. Let it go. Is that well understood? Let it go. So learn to pursue each other. Learn to do this daily. I need to stress that. Look at me if you can. Learn to pursue each other daily. Not weekly. Not monthly. No. Daily. You know why? Love is renewed daily. Don't love weekly. No. Don't love weekly. Love daily. The love of today will not be enough for the love of tomorrow. So love daily and improve your love capacity every day. Say so the man is unlovable. Just start the journey. You will melt all the, all the rough edges. Just start. Love daily. I got a question. Somebody sent in a question. It says, at what point can a woman walk out of her marriage? At no point until death do you pass. Did you get the answer? Very straight. At what point? Listen, marriage is a life journey. So you don't go into it unadvisably. Now, there could be a problem. And hear me very well. Hear me. There are problems that could be life-threatening. There are problems that could be career-threatening. There are problems that might even be health-threatening. But that's why when you go into marriage, if it is a Christian marriage, if it is a Christian marriage, get the qualification, then the Bible, which is the guiding manual, has answers to everything you are going through. Look for a man, a married counselor you can trust and let him sit over the issues. And let me tell you a life case we did where we saw a couple and the situation was very threatening. They've been married for many years. They're elderly couple, but somehow Somebody is taking the order to be a satanic agent and the marriage was collapsing. What we did was my wife and I drove to that family, carried the wife to our own house and the wife lived with us for three weeks. Is it three weeks or three months? I can't remember now. Live with us for that long. Had devotions together, look at issues together, check everything together, and by the time 
She was done in our place. Her mind had changed. Good understanding have come and the home can be saved. Now that is how to deal with it. Walking out is not cheap because it's going to leave the scar on you for a lifetime. So don't walk out of your marriage. Get back to the manual of the God who began marriage and find answers to your trouble and get it solved. Problems are meant to be solved. Don't walk out like a lazy person looking for a cheap way out. Everybody gets rewarded for problems they solve. I know a woman, a man, a couple rather, and after many years of beautiful marriage, the lady had a mental breakdown for almost four or three years, and it was terrible. This man stood by this lady, carried this lady everywhere. In fact, they came to live with us in our house. And this lady will do any strange thing as one who is mentally derailed. And this man will wrap this lady and said, Honey, I still love you. I still love you. That is real commitment. That's commitment. That's priority. That is pursuit. Even in a bad mental state, this man is still pursuing the love. So don't walk out of your marriage. Seek counsel. We have quite a lot of people online today who have joined us from different nations. We see Ghana, we see Liberia, we see Netherlands. I saw India, um, Canada, where are they? South Africa and the other ones. Thank you for joining in. We'll see you tomorrow, 4.30. Tomorrow evening, we'll be having a live discussion with two families. The families of the Oguri days and the families of the menace. It will be a beautiful time in that place. And don't forget in the morning between 1 and 2, I mean the afternoon between 1 and 2, we'll have the children's service, having a children's day meeting for one hour, 1 to 2. Please get all your children and family to join in. See you tomorrow. The Lord bless and keep you strong. Amen. Love is patient. Love is kind, love is humble all the time, not easily angered, enduring the test. So never forget, love is the most excellent. Oh, love is patient, love is patient, love is kind. Love is humble all the time, not easily angered, enduring the test. So never forget, love is the most excellent. Oh, love is patient.